Stene, more welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Today? I am doing wonderful, apart from a mild cold. Ah, so I'm perfectly fine too. It's uh, been settling down all these different novelties here uh, at uh, Kdynia, where I'm at right now. But uh, I think we should go right to the today's topic, which is uh, social media. And uh, it can both be a contagious uh, phenomena, or it could be the uh, probably ninth wonder of the world. There are like two different camps there. And uh, I, I believe that uh, regardless of how you live today's day and age, you should at least have heard about different kinds of social media. So what comes to your mind when I say these two words? So for me, social media is mostly the popular platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn and photo-based versions of basically sharing your life with your friends. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's very interesting just to define the term social media. I mean, I think when people think of social media, they think of Facebook first, Twitter second, LinkedIn next, uh, maybe. But there are many others too. Do you consider like YouTube a social media? I would not consider that, no. Okay. Why is the case? I think it's a difference between the consumption It's not really consuming your social circle. So if you ended up on YouTube only seeing your friends' videos, then it would be basically social media. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, and I guess in that sense, uh, TikTok is not uh, qualifying it either. Or a different. So some people, I think a platform can serve different purposes for different people. Because uh, it's good to like draw a distinction between what's actually a platform and what's actually more of a messaging thing. In the previous uh, episode we did together, we touched upon uh, Slack and the various systems messengers but you wouldn't consider slack as a social media i guess it's not uh, necessarily a social media so i wouldn't i would say most people don't use it such a way because i'm thinking in uh, people who live more in southeast asia for those who live there i know for a fact when i was there that uh, there was a thing called line which was very popular and line was kind of like a, a mixture between what was considered a platform and what was considered as the messenger it was kind of like a mixture of various things but you haven't heard of it i guess no particularly one so um i want to ask you um which social medias do you have and um, which ones of those you have are you most active on and before i tell you that i forgot to mention instagram is quite important <laughs> social media too so well, uh, back to the question so to answer that question i would say that i have tried most of the ones we mentioned so far and i have found that for me what i get out of the different platforms It really depends on what friends are based on it. So it's this whole network effect. If all your friends is, are on Facebook, then Facebook is on such an advantage. So for me, that's the one where I end up finding more social get-togethers, both online and offline. So for me, that's the one that actually gives me the most uh, enjoyment. While Instagram can, of course, be used for a completely different complementary purpose, which I personally think is not a good fit for me because there are other ways of enjoying pictures together with friends. And I think in-person socializing is underrated compared to watching other people's photos on different social media. So for me, Facebook would be the one that I primarily use and actually find useful. I have, of course, used most of the other ones on and off. And I still check For example, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and a few more, I believe, Instagram as well. But uh, it's really Facebook that's the one that I find most useful for me. Okay, so you're checking like on and off, for instance, like LinkedIn yes. and uh, Twitter exactly. to make sure to yes. get different kind of information, I guess. Yeah, and then you could say that you have a different social circle on LinkedIn. You wouldn't find the same posts or the same people in your social circle on those platforms because they are targeting a very different interest. So for that reason, it really is complementary more than competitive. Yeah, exactly. I totally get the idea that uh, each platform has their like unique characteristic, which I believe is kind of like the reason why it exists after all. So uh, I personally use uh, Facebook, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, the most and I, i i agree that they are um, quite different in terms of uh, usage i mean facebook is more for me in terms of uh, like the friends that are 
actually more my friends rather than just followers. While Twitter is more like, uh, I would say more towards the follower side. It's not like you get this kind of personal connection with somebody like you, for instance, give on Facebook. And LinkedIn is quite interesting too. It's kind of like Facebook, but taking it up to more professional sense while maybe not being more personal sense. So for me, it's like Facebook for the personal, Twitter for the more like consumption and uh, also the most uh, low friction for me to uh, spread out uh, ideas, which is kind of what uh, Twitter is supposed to. And LinkedIn for the more professional sites as well. But you're not using Twitter a lot, I guess? No, I find that the information that uh, I, the benefit I get from it is not worth my time. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's actually good to um, have um, at least a clear decision on uh, which ones are actually worth your time, because that's something we're going to touch upon later in this episode. So uh, why don't you tell us like how, um, how you're using, for instance, Facebook? Are you checking it on a regular schedule or is it more of a sporadic basis or are you trying to avoid it as much as possible? What mindset? I try is, uh... to check it once per week thoroughly and then basically reviewing what's the most important things that I actually want to get out of it. If I want to find a specific event, I can check for that once per week. I don't have to check what's happening today, every day. I find that the less time I spend on the platform, the more beneficial the time I spend on it is. Weekly is my ideal. And then, of course, looking for specific events if I'm invited to an event. Of course, then we, related to that specific event, I end up checking more often. That sounds like a very healthy approach to uh, social media. And also, in um, if we compare to like the all users out there, I think it's the most uncommon and mostly recommended by many. This camp, for instance, uh, there was an author called Ken Newport, Digital Minimalism, who advocates just like you uh, mentioned, like some kind of once a week, check the most important things. But um, I guess that like, um, when you're actually sitting down, it takes like 15 to 20 minutes to just like scroll through the most important thing that yes, was exactly. prevalent. And, um, but I don't think you post a lot, if I'm understood correctly. Correct. I find it to be more, for me, direct messages when it's relevant to a few people, it's preferred. Okay. So I haven't really broadcasted so often at least uh, some particular sure, or product or uh, different uh, source of attention that you want to mass out. It's more like you are targeting certain people that can then advance it further. Correct. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Because when uh, I have a charity collection for birthdays, for example, then of course I post those kind of things and limit it to those things that I find important. Yeah, could you could you tell us what the latest charity was? Because that's a very good thing with Facebook. Uh, I think the ability to raise awareness for yeah altruistic or maybe philanthropic uh, gatherings. So could you tell yes. us like what was the last uh, one that I actually donated yes. to? It was a good thing. Yes, so for my birthday, uh, I wanted to donate to a different charity from what I previously donated to. So I've been donating to more than 10 different ones, but I tried to I tried to not limit it to just one uh, area. So for the latest one, I did uh, the cancer uh, child cancer fund, the Swedish uh, version, and that's basically collecting money that then is donated to researchers in Sweden researching uh, cancer in uh, well, youth, children and youth. So I think that's a very good cause and it's a good cause to have via Facebook. Most people remember having had a childhood that they want others to also enjoy. Yeah, exactly. And um, so that sounds like, um, I guess it was, um, it fulfilled the objectives that you wanted to set up or uh, was it more of a moderate response? For me, the goal of certain amount of money is not important. It's more a case of encouraging people, reminding people that it's a good way to uh, spend your money. Okay, nice. So I want to come back to um, social media for a bit because uh, I confess that, um, and that's probably because I post a lot as well, that I shake more than once a day. And uh, I've been thinking about this, like what's the optimal amount of uh, checks that uh, could be most beneficial for um, at least the user in terms of uh, social media. And uh, I've written this article, which I link in the description when I talk about uh, how often you should check email. And it's most less, at least um, as less often, as rarely as possible. So one could say like, one could extrapolate rather that uh, 
it could apply for social media too. And it seems like uh, Stenemo here is uh, following that advice to heart. Yeah, just that taking both, taking only the signal and leaving the rest of the noise behind. Yeah, so um, he's trying to. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there there might be some slip ups, I guess, like with all of us. Yeah, the platform is not optimized for you to go through all the important things and then be done with it. <laughs> it's very clear that most platforms try to uh, make you spend many hours on it. And um, is this actually one um, reason why people are more often uh, either scared or afraid or disgusted? by uh, social media use overall. Some people call it like more addicted. Uh, I believe there is some ed- evidence both from uh, the popular TV uh, documentary called The Social Dilemma and uh, other kinds of books that warns about the more addictive elements of social media. And uh, have you found it to be um, potentially one who could be <laughs> master you instead of the opposite? Yeah, I think that it's a challenge to be able to get the good out of it without being caught up in the bad parts. And I think the way I'm using it now has grown from both noticing the problems, trying to work around them, and basically reading on how to actually benefit from social media rather than just uh, brainlessly uh, consuming it, which is so easy to end up doing. Yeah, and I guess the fact that you are very very specific when actually using it makes it clear to not fall into this like unconscious vortex, I believe. Yes. So um, am I right to say that you don't have social media on your phone then? I actually do. But I do not consume social media on my phone to the most extent because then I do end up spending more time on it. Because I know many people like uh, trying to like eliminate the urge to just like check or uh, um, get lost in <laughs> doom scrolling. So they end up, um, and I, I was doing it for quite a while too, just eliminating all the social media apps and only accessing it through a computer at a certain time. And I think it could help first, just like people are using uh, when they want to focus on uh, blockers in general. But then um, after you solidify the more new habit, you can kind of like reintroduce them but with some kind of rules. And um, for those who listen to uh, or read uh, Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, this is basically what he suggests. He suggests that uh, people should uh, be very intentional with the technology after spending some time away from it, because uh, it could be some kind of moderate behavior addiction. And um, so that is like one aspect that you could use in order to uh, not get addicted, so to speak. But there are also two other to consider controversial aspects. And I'm thinking of the privacy thing. What do you think about social media and uh, privacy? It's an issue that isn't so big for me, but I'm aware that it's a big issue for some people. And I know people who have been stalked on different platforms. So it really is a big issue for those people that are strongly affected, which I've been lucky not to have been. Yeah, that, that's good that you have been on the good side of <laughs> the data breach. <laughs> and um, furthermore, like the last thing uh, the social media is often criticized for is the fact that uh, we could. And I, I think maybe it's, uh, it's different now, but uh, Instagram was often accused of um, you were scrolling and you see all this like filtered shirts people having a good time or at least perceived to have a good time and thus make your own self-esteem a little bit weaker. But I guess you you haven't found it to uh, be the case, but do you have any advice for any people who find that they constantly have to compare themselves for fake versions of the internet? I think the only way to really avoid this is to not even end up in that situation where you look at other people's uh, vacation photo or birthday parties that you weren't at. If you missed a birthday party because you were at another friend's place, you shouldn't be uh, feeling FOMO for not having gone to the other party. Yeah, I think so too. And um, that's something I want to elaborate upon that uh, if you're just like not exposing to all these pictures, then you will later find out you can build up your self-esteem, healthy grounds, for instance, like solid identity and competence and uh, stuff like that. So I want to um, talk about last thing about the good things of social media, because I'm kind of in a mixed bag too, since I'm trying to uh, um, at least um, post on um, all these platforms about uh, different ideas and also the blog posts. And I think it's a very good thing the fact you can have such a massive reach and draw like a massive uh, audience especially on twitter i found this to be very useful 
What do you think about uh, the more networking space and the ability to quickly make yourself heard? I think it's really good. And I've been mostly uh, benefiting from finding interesting events and finding interesting organizations. I'm like we we spoken a lot about effective altruism. And if it wasn't for the network effect, that would not have reached Uppsala and Stockholm, where I've been active in EA. Oh, okay. So it's like one person knows one who knows one and all of a sudden a search algorithm pops up like based on your interest uh, this one uh, could be a good match for you and th- this was where it all started yeah i think it's very hard for a new person who has a great idea to without internet without any platform reach a thousand people to have them interested in your product but thanks to the network effect on different platforms if you have a great idea it's very easy to find a thousand people somewhere in the world that share your interest yeah exactly and uh, That's also a very good thing that you can have a peculiar interest and although you might not find it, find like-minded people in your immediate environment, social media could be a great way to just like open up communities you've never heard of and can actually see, achieve that part of belonging that uh, one needs. And I guess that's the same with you too. Like this is probably why you enjoy different groups in order to satisfy current inclinations. Yes. So, um, and I guess like in general, when it comes to social media, because I think we can conclude that social media both have good elements and bad elements. So it's like fire here. Fire is very good for like cooking food, but you can burn yourself or burn the house as well. So am I right to say that, uh, or do you at least agree with the fact that you should use it responsibly if you are managing to do it on a very sparse but intentional way? It could have massive networks effect, but if you indulge too much, it could rather lead to severe burns. Yes, I think that's a nice uh, reference. <laughs> so I've been uh, playing around with fire reason from gas stove. So this is why this analogy ca- came to mind. And lastly, I want to top it off with uh, one more question. What do you think is the so- future of social media, especially now with all these recent discussions about metaverse? And also, um, I don't know if you know about Clubhouse, but that's, that is also one thing where people just talk virtual rooms, stuff like that. What's your... Um, perspective the recent i think they're going to continue evolving and i'm sure that when we have a new platform that actually serves a purpose better or serves a new purpose that uh, interests enough people it's going to have as big an effect as the current platforms have had but uh, it's always hard to imagine uh, the ones that we have today for example that limiting twitter is a good example of something that on paper seems very strange to be successful yeah especially in the beginning when it's like constrained in terms of text but maybe it was the reason why it spread too because it's like peculiar yes, exactly it was specifically because it limited the communication to a specific style that didn't exist so it created a niche niche that no one thought was needed yeah exactly and uh, how could you just like create some kind of like blue ocean strategy in which you create a market for yourself but so i think since... the future of social media is going to have many similar uh, like tiktok for example having short videos rather than any length video is a, also a good example and i'm sure that when we have completely different technology that's going to lead to, to completely different social media uh, or social platforms and it's probably going to be more social more interaction face to face than current ones are you excited for the metaverse seeing as you are quite more experienced with vr than me i think that it has potential and if it's actually going to be lived up to i'm not sure but it has great potential. So I think we're going to see a few attempts and some of the early ones might be successful, but it could be many years until we have a Facebook level of uh, success. It could still be that another newcomer or one of the other big ones end up being more successful in the metaverse. Yeah, that's very interesting to see more (laughs) how that VR development works. But uh, what do you think about uh, Clubhouse and the fact that you can be in a room with strangers and just talk? Do you think it's a fad or something that could be uh, uh, more popular uh, with current times? Not sure. Because uh, that's, I believe, for people who uh, want to like use their voices rather than text, it could be kind of a different thing. But Clubhouse is more like of a live scenario, so it's not like uh, you uh, have to uh, always have it on demand, such as uh, streaming services like Twitches. So in a way, it's uh, more of more of an event scheduler 
rather than uh, just uh, a normal streaming service. But uh, so I want to top it off with the really last question. What would be your ideal social media in the future? If you can think like 10 years ahead, what what would the ideal social media for Sten and Muluk? I think if we talk 10 years ahead, I would ideally have to be your normal glasses, but with an augmented reality where you are completely in control. So if you want to consume uh, a specific video, let's say someone sends you a link to a video, you could consume it using your glasses uh, on a hologram, basically. Uh, while at the same time, if you're talking about planning an event, you could see your calendar pop up and uh, you can see when your friends are available because they have integrated their schedule, their calendars into your calendar so that you can see when your most important friends are available to watch a movie together that you've been planning to watch, for example. So having everything even more integrated, be able to interact even further, hopefully going to be more enjoyable when we can actually have your friend be in a hologram and you could be watching a movie together in a virtual um, theater, for example. I completely agree. And uh, I just want to say as a really last thing that uh, social media can also be criticized for taking time off from real friendship and stuff like that. But if you can integrate it so you can talk to your distant friends, just as you would with like the in-person friends, I think it would be a potentially a breaking mixture of both like accessibility to people around the world and the feeling that uh, our social brain really needs this kind of interplay back and forth, both body language, tone, and uh, messages overall. So with this futuristic dream ahead of us, I want to uh, thank you for this episode. Thank you for a very enjoyable episode. And have a very nice day. You too.